everybody, Ann here, and I'm sitting out on my porch way past coffee, and I've been on a staycay, and you know, I just stayed at home pretty much, and uh, kind of loafed around, so here's what I did. <laughs> I'm on Mr. Lucas' property, looking for mushrooms. I've already bought, found a bunch of chanterelles, and look at this. I have never seen a mushroom that starts out blue. I don't know what this is. Let's see what it looks like underneath. Well, I am gonna pull this. This is so cool. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's blue, it's got blue gills. I have no idea what this is, but I am going to find out. Look at that. A blue mushroom with blue gills. Oh my goodness, amazing. This beautiful thing is known as the Lactarius indigo, blue milk cap or blue milky. They start out blue, they have blue gills, and if you cut across a section of the gills, it bleeds like a blue kind of sticky substance. All milkies do this. Uh, normally it's white that comes out of them, but this one it's blue. Got a little bit on my finger and it's gooey and it's sticky and I don't know, it's just pretty weird. But the thing about this mushroom is it's not poisonous, it's edible. It starts out blue. As soon as I cracked it open, it was blue, unlike the ones that stain blue. Those are poisonous, but this one's edible and it's going to be delicious. Gonna put it on pizza. And now for some wildlife. Bobblehead isn't the only one who has butterflies. Actually, this is not a butterfly. I think it's just a moth, but it's so pretty. Look at it. Oh, oh, look, look. It's clapping, it's clapping for me. And Stunning Life, I love your videos. Hooray, standing ovation. Oh my goodness, this guy is so cool. I just had to stand there and watch him or her. Look at his little head. It's like, what's it thinking? What is it thinking? I think it's just eating, right? Pretty dragonfly. Don't know what kind it is. But I love it. And now for some very, very wildlife. Miss Judy. She's a crazy dog. My goodness, I love her. And here's my first harvest of tomatoes. Yep, just picked a few while they were still green or just starting to ripen. I put them in a sunny window and let them ripen the rest of the way and make some fried green tomatoes with the rest of them and picked a couple of the red cubanelles before they turned red just because. Oh my goodness. We've got tiny baby cucumbers. Are there any more? Are there any more tiny baby cucumbers? If there's one, there's got to be more. Oh, look at this one. Look at that one. Are there any more? I'm sure there are. Oh my goodness, I think I'm going to get cucumbers now if I can just keep them watered so they don't start, you know, the yellowing and dropping the, the fruits. It's trying to start raining right now. Please, please God, let it rain. Please. It rained for about 30 seconds today, but oh, please let it rain. Look at how beautiful and lush it looks. Oh, I'm going to take you back there in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you, guess what? Some mushrooms I found. This is towards the back of my property. You can see the tiny house off in the distance here. And I almost missed these because I was kind of rushing through. It was so, so hot. But look at these beautiful oyster mushrooms. Oh my gosh, and there's so many of them. Look, yep, lots of bugs on them. That's okay. They'll add some protein. Uh-oh, little spider there too. Yep. Aren't those just gorgeous? You better believe it. I absolutely did harvest each and every one of these. And I found another one on the other side of the tree. Um, unfortunately, this one was too infested with, well, it wasn't just bugs on it. They had laid their eggs and there were too many maggots. And so you can see those little white things in there. Just gross. Would have been too much work to try and get all of those out. So I figured mm, I'm just going to leave it there in the forest. But this is my final bounty of oyster mushrooms. I just kind of dusted the bugs off and took them home and uh, washed them off with some water. Got the rest of the yucky stuff off of them. And here is my total harvest. Oyster mushrooms, chanterelles, and my blue indigo milk cap. 
the first dish that I made, I used the chanterelles, the orange ones. I know this looks gross, but it actually tasted really good. I, I just used um, like canned chicken, and it has chanterelle mushrooms, just kind of like a stir fry, and zucchini and onions, and then I put it over a bed of couscous. I know you can't really see it. Season it with salt, pepper, garlic, and I don't know, maybe something else, but it was so good. I just filled up my fly magnet and I'm putting it on my porch. I'm just gonna see what it if it smells too bad because the flies are getting really bad. So hopefully this will start working. Uh, they say that it takes a few hours for it to start working. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna check it later on this evening and hopefully I got some dead flies in there. What's up, Judy girl? What's up? Look at her skin's gotten a lot better, although she gets up underneath the van and she rubs up a against the bottom of it, but see, she's getting a lot better. She still has some little parts underneath her, her neck. You want to play, don't you? This girl, I tell you what, she will play fetch for hours and hours. Settle down now, settle down now. But she's not scratching and she seems to be doing good. How you doing, girlfriend? You love going for rides with mommy in the truck, don't you? I love you. I'm testing out my new alarm. I just turned it on to the number one setting, which is full day and night alarm. And so I think it's just going through its motions right now. So let's just sit back and see what happens. I don't know. I don't know how loud it's going to be. I think we wait until it stops flashing. And then I can test it. I've actually got it upside down. I need to mount it the other way because the solar panel is on the bottom. Careful there, Judy. Okay, now I'm going to move and let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do we make it stop? <laughs> okay, I've got it set up right here. I'm going to let it run through its little facing until it arms itself. I'm going to leave the light up above it that Mr. Lucas gave me just because it's so bright and it stretches out really, really far. Just a couple more beeps, I think, and then we'll be done. And then I'll start walking towards it, and we will see how close you can get to the tiny house before the alarm goes off. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I was like two steps away from where that starts. I think that this thing is going to be absolutely wonderful. That's annoying. Ha-ha! <laughs> It's got four working modes. To test it out, I put it in mode one, which it'll alarm and flash all day long if somebody approaches the porch. But I think I'm gonna set it in mode three. I think it uh, is active for like a 12 hour period. I'm not sure. I think it starts when the sun goes down, um, but I'll test it out. I'll test it out later tonight and let you know how it goes. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And you know what, if I leave, I can always change it to full day flash alarm mode. Maybe that'll I'll scare people away, who knows. But I think this is a pretty, pretty nifty little thing. So I'm gonna go hang it up and set it and hopefully scare away some bad guys or girls. Now I'm also gonna be using the trail cam, but I'm not gonna show you where I'm gonna be putting it because I don't want anybody to know. But if I capture anything, I will definitely let you see it. So I've got my security lights all around the cabin. I have my security alarm, and I also have my trail cam that I'm going to place strategically. And I may move it from time to time just to, you know, see what's going on out on the homestead, if you know what I mean, especially when I'm not around, especially after dark. I want to see what kind of critters are going around. But, uh, yeah, so I think I'm set. I'm feeling pretty safe. I went ahead and re-hooked up my Harbor Freight solar panels to one of the, one battery that's still kind of good. doesn't have a lot of storage, but I can still use it to charge phones and run some fans and whatnot. And I've relocated, well, I've located these on this side of the tiny house. And you know what? This area gets quite a lot of sun right over in this area. So I figured I'm going to utilize it. I may end up just relocating the entire solar system over to this area. Uh, nothing else is going on over here and I can just use the other side for growing, but I haven't decided yet. But yeah, so this this gives me a little bit of extra solar because that uh, refrigerator just takes up so much energy, it's crazy. So this will kind of keep me going. I still got my fan going. 
What's that? What's that, Judy? Judy can be so demanding sometimes. But anyhow, yeah, I use my fan when I'm sitting out on my porch. It helps keep me cool when the air's not moving. And, uh, oh, as far as the rest of the mushrooms, uh, the blue one I put on top of a pizza, chopped it up. And um, I didn't get any pictures, though. Oh, well, it was good. And with the oyster mushrooms, just slice them up. And I did a double batter, dipped them in flour, then a wet batter that's, you know, been seasoned, fried them up. They taste like chicken fingers. I've got a, um, a video on my uh, cooking playlist that shows how I do it. And then you saw what I did with the um, chanterelles. And it's so cool to go foraging and just find food. I love it. And I tell you what, Mr. Lucas has a lot of cool stuff on his property. And he says I can come over anytime. And look, he's got so much land out behind there. I was really, really surprised to find those oyster mushrooms. Anyhow, um, that's all. That's all I got for you guys today. I will see you in the next video. Look what Judy just dug up. Hmm. I wonder if I can restore it. Hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.